The repo uh, had a namespace like Okay. I don't actually have a Berserker Ubuntu wrapper that I've created. All right, so let's see. Other one created by the user Ubuntu. All right, so. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So that's repository. Then we have tag. Maybe I don't know if I like what I want to do for titles like this, but I think that's fine. Um, okay, it's so a tag. Um, what is, what are the versions of Ubuntu? That's just gonna start downloading. Okay, so we have um, 22. Okay, so 22 is the LTS, 23 is the most recent. Yes, like if we want an older version like 20. Don't they have like a, just a 20? Oh, 
Oh, there's only one. Okay, so if I want like 20.04, we could just download that one specifically. Um, maybe not tied because we often want to develop. That's the tag image ID. Okay, so every image gets a hash as the ID, and we can use that instead of the name when uh, running um, when running Docker commands. Created, okay. Now that's created uh, the latest. About 17 days ago, let's see, three weeks ago. Yeah, so that, that is correct, three weeks ago. So it's nice to see how long ago the Docker image was created. Um, I guess it's more like And then size.
Uh, Crafter, hello. This is exactly what I need after watching the Axum course. Yeah, I, I had thought about doing this before the Axum course. Uh, because like, I, I know that I've I've basically said like, hey, just like, you know, just Docker, let's install that. But everybody knows how to use Docker, right? But nah, I know that, I know that, um, I know that there's a lot of people who are sort of concerned about Docker because it seems scary. But like, we're going to go over the easy parts of it and hopefully shed some light on it so it's less scary. So yeah, hopefully this will be helpful. Um, okay, so that's that's everything here. Okay, so this lists all the Docker images. Great. Okay. I mean, so I think that's all we need from from this one. Okay, next up is going to be pulling a Docker image. Um, I need to go use the restroom really quickly. It's been another hour and some odd minutes. So I'm going to take another quick uh, three minute break or so. I think I think the break every every hour or so I think is nice. Um, especially since it like gets me up and walking around, which is also good for our body. So let's do that. Let's get up, stretch um take a three minute or so break we'll be right back and we'll continue working with this uh do i have i keep on like turning this off because it's, it's crazy so we'll run this again this will be fine no i want you over here all right i will be back in a few minutes All right, let's uh, let's continue. Maybe I'll actually leave this running in the background, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't work too well after uh, after a while. Okay, so um, pulling a Docker image.
Interesting. I didn't realize that they had that underscore in the URL there. Okay, so to use this people we can search for any operating system or software. Um,
Let's find out what engine they're using. Sixteen, it looks like. Yeah, I think 16 is... Oh, Postgres? Okay, database versions. Yeah, okay, so 16 is the most recent version there, and, uh, oh, okay, that is actually 16, so it's got it. Do you, okay, which version, is there a dot version? 16.1 is the most recent. Okay, which is 16.1? Um, okay, so they support version 16. Um, Okay, that happens to be the version of Postgres. However, I want to make sure that I'm using the um, using the latest version. What words do I want to use here? So, what happens to be this? However, I want to make sure that I'm. Um, hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, however, okay, so...
Oh, is there no 16? Do you have multiple? Oh, you have multiple pages. Yeah, see, there we go. Yeah, I want just 16 to 1, probably. Daylu, hello! How are you doing today? Yeah, I agree. Docker is a good one to do. Okay, so that gives us all of that. That's good. Blob, welcome back. Do you have any suggestions on how viewers can support me while I'm working on courses and stuff in lieu of ad money? So 
uh i mean there's okay so the the free way to support me would obviously just being here sh uh, uh showing up to uh watch like just having that viewer count be higher means that i'm higher in a list of developers so more people then see the streams uh or like see the videos um sharing is like another free way of doing that so if you share the stream or the vods or the videos or anything else uh we you know with other people who are interested in that kind of thing that uh that's a that's another great free way if you want to provide money type things i have uh there's obviously subscriptions bits on twitch i have uh memberships open on um on or what is it called uh, uh youtube um and i think those are the only ways that you can pay me money directly on those two sites and then um uh and then there's obviously my courses so if you want to buy a course uh that i that is probably like the most efficient way of giving me money right now because that is like i'm only being charged the the um the fees for stripe which is that that's the smallest one it's like three percent plus 30 cents or something like that which is not not bad at all that's actually like the best of everything some people do ko-fi i've not heard of ko-fi some have a pretty stiff rate so i know it's uneven in terms of efficiency yeah that, that's the problem with like a lot of these things but you know, as, as someone who has um, given money to like other streamers in the past, uh, there's there's a lot like I would really hesitate to like go through sites that like I don't trust necessarily. It's so, like uh, going through like Twitch and like buying bits and putting that in. Yeah, they get more percentage of that, uh, but you uh, you know that you're not going to get ripped off and have your credit card stolen and have to deal with that. So like there's. That, that's all the things so basically uh basically right now those are the only things that i have set up um and i'm i'm up for adding more incentive lines to, i guess it's not incentive more more options for people to be able to to pay me if uh if you would like um obviously what i really want to be able to do is like provide some kind of value back to you so to me it's like that's the course right i don't have an ability right now to prepay courses because i'm uh i'm hesitant about going into like the pre-release model that being said like i i would be willing to look into that if people just like really want to give me money or just like a hey just like you know buy buy something else like i don't i don't know what what to do for that kind of thing so i don't know i'm open i'm open to suggestions if you have like a favorite thing pre-order me a camel um The camel is in the making. I see that's the thing is like I don't want somebody to like pay me and then say like okay well you're you're now because you gave me five bucks I'm now like beholden to make a course on like a camel and I won't necessarily do that. Oh, you feel kind of guilty lurking and bothering me for hours? Oh, please don't do that. Like part of part like there, there's um. There are multiple reasons for me streaming, like and doing these, like on on Twitch and live. Uh, part of it is that I just go ahead and do it. Like part of it is sort of like co-working and just building it. Part of it is also being available to all of you and like let you all see how like the so the sauce is made, so they can see the quality of the course. And in some ways, you can now know if you want to buy it or not by the time it's done. Uh, I kind of joke that this is also the free tier essentially of the course like by being here and watching it or like going through the VODs with like you know me getting distracted me throwing ads every once in a while uh that's the that is the free tier um and then you can pay me for the course that doesn't have all that stuff in <laughs> later on um and also 
It would literally take me longer to make this without streaming, ironically, because I would probably just get distracted and go do something else. So this is a way for you all to keep. It's a way I keep myself accountable by putting myself in front of all of you, which is a really kind of funny way of, of doing it. But it works, for me at least. All right, so this is um, finding and pulling a doctor image. So I think we're good with that. Oh, I thought you meant a platform that plays streamers with streamers with cigarettes. If I ever, uh, if I ever want to start doing the like um, the meme side of like Twitch and doing that, I will. That that is an amazing idea. I'm literally going to write that down because I kind of that that's an amazing. So I'm I'm put that under projects. Uh, let's see. Twitch, YouTube, payment site where uh, content creators are paid in stupid things like cigarettes instead of money and i'm not even thinking of like cigarettes i'm thinking of like things like used cigarettes like cigarette butts like just completely and totally trash useless items okay so we found and we pulled a docker image down We've kind of run a container, so I don't need to do that anymore. We've listed Docker containers. Oh, wait, no, containers, okay. So if we're doing CRUD, so we've we've essentially created, we've pulled down, so that's the create, uh, that's this type of create. This type of create is gonna be different. um we've listed the container we've listed the images so anything else with images we want to do okay we can delete an image We are chat. We are all seen. We are eternal. There is no escape. Yeah, that sounds like Twitch chat and probably YouTube chat now, too.
Okay, so Docker gives us an easy way to remove the images from our system. Oh, there's two of those. That's not what I wanted.
Um, see, one, th one thing I kind of don't understand watching the stream today is whether it's possible to do a backend system plus a database instance without using Docker Compose. You sort of got the impression during the stream today that there's something simpler that fits the web development on Docker Notion. Yes, so I personally like to use Docker Compose because I think it sort of like puts everything together, but you absolutely don't need to have Docker Compose because you could just start up a Docker in, you could just start up a, a Postgres instance uh, and then you can launch your server inside of another Docker container and then just make sure that they're in the same network and able to communicate with each other. And then and then there you go. And then uh, that's kind of what Docker Compose is doing for you behind the scenes. Like it's, it's just setting that up already for us. But having multiple containers talking to each other make it more of a full stack development thing. Yeah, so basically think of think of docker compose as making it easier to spin up multiple containers at the same time in the same ecosystem and it generally replaces the need for something like a bunch of different um scripts to sort of like launch everything that being said, Corbob, like, absolutely. You could do, do, like, Docker run, whatever, for the various... Yeah, you could just have your own script that does it, too, and make your own compose, essentially. But, yeah. So, what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna do everything separately on their own and then bring it together with Docker Compose. So, that way, Docker Compose isn't as magical anymore. Because once you know that, you're like, oh, that's all it's doing? It's just running just, like, Docker docker run like four different times for me behind the scenes oh okay cool i mean it does a little bit more than that like it creates like a network it creates you know it creates a um volumes for you it does all that stuff it just is a nicer way of setting it up okay so all these um it will also, Docker Combos will also create and delete your images for you too. At least it should, because Docker Compose screws up sometimes. And then when that happens, you have to know how to manually clean this up. So like knowing how to delete images, knowing how to do all this stuff is essential for working with Docker Compose for those times when fun things happen. Okay, so this is pretty much deleting. So Okay, so there's not really an update. So it's supposed to take care of destroying the environment for you. I have noticed that sometimes it doesn't do so good of a job, <laughs> but it's supposed to. Like if you do Docker here, let's let's go find one. Let's go find the original course that we did. Uh, this was like full stack, full stack Axum. my this was old version of docker compose so this was we have to do docker compose with this so if i do docker compose up is it running i think it's running um okay so now all the things are created, right? So if I do a Docker PS, we can see here's my full stack Rust to do course database that was created. Um, we have a few other things in here. 
But I think, oh yeah, full stack uh, to do rest course, full stack to do rest course. So lots of fun stuff in there. If I also see uh, Docker network, here's a full stack to do rest course default network that was created for me. And then it created a full stack volume for me as well. So I have all those things sort of set up for this. So I can now do a docker compose down. Uh, so it removes, so if I do docker ps, Do I have rip grip? I think I do have rip grip. Um, pipe to rip grip, and then I want a full stack. See, like, it's supposed to, when I do a Docker compose down, it's supposed to remove these containers. So that way you can, like, pull them up again. In fact, it's like, literally telling me that it removed the container and yet still I have a container. Um, the problem is that I have these behind a profile. So I, th uh, let's see. I have a profiles. Okay, so you don't have a profile. You have a profile. Node.js Express is the profile I'm going to need to run. Except also compare front end. Okay, cool. So uh, I want compose down profiles. And then there was also what? Compare front ends. Oh, compare dash front end. Okay, so apparently I didn't have that. So that's that's cool. So uh, now if I do a Docker PS. Now, now it's gone. So that's the problem with um, with using like profiles and other things that Docker Compose down doesn't remove everything uh, sometimes, like depending upon how things are set up. But now let's uh, take a look at the network again. So that network is gone now. So it auto took down the network. Um, it left the volume up. So this is something that it does. It leaves the volume up in case you want it just to keep that. So you do have to manually delete the volume uh, between runs of that. So let's do that. Docker. Um, and then Docker images. Um, it's supposed to, uh, wait, there's a way to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I could do dash V and dash dash RMI, and it also, what? Oh, uh, oh. So if you do that, it removes all of the images and the volumes for me automatically. So that way I don't have to go and manually do that. So there are ways of setting that up for us.
yeah vagrant has its own issues too and like maybe someday i can like do a course or something on vagrant but i'm not a huge fan of using it so i generally try to avoid it when i can i just end up using docker for things um but okay yeah so like basically you should be able to set up docker compose to be able to clean up your environment uh you just might need some flags like this when you're doing a docker compose down which then you can like put that into the script so that way you could just do like you know docker stop or like you know spin down or shut down or whatever whatever you want to call it and then it becomes a little bit easier um all right uh what was i doing oh this is two docker course um all right so delete a docker image okay so we have crud so create create an image um we also did create a container we have update an image okay so update I want to say about this like it is it is now like static it is now like sitting there forever when we pull a docker image to our system it is um 